Hey, it's Dave Weiner with ET Online, and I'm here with Trevor Roth, the CEO of Roddenberry Entertainment here in Studio City, and he is about to show us some really cool Star Trek stuff. What do you have here? So this is sort of one of our display cases of cool uh, Star Trek stuff. Um, a lot of it is uh, comes from our, our merchandising and, and our things that we create and um, and sell. But um, other, it's kind of sprinkled with some cool memorabilia that's actually on screen stuff. So, for instance, uh, this is um, you know a replica of the uh, original series Enterprise bridge plaque. That was the plaque that was inside the Enterprise, and this particular one was signed by John Cho and George Takei. Sulu um, and Sulu. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm going to open a chain. Sulu and Sulu. Uh, and uh, but but in addition to that, like so, that's a replica, and yet right in front of it, this is the. Um, Itic symbol. This was a, a very important symbol in the Vulcan culture mm -hmm. um, and uh, worn by Spock um, mm -hmm. in one of the episodes of the original series. And this was the actual screen used uh, prop um, oh, wow. that was in that. So that was really cool and kind of a, a nice piece of Star Trek history. Down here, if you take a look at this shelf, a lot of these things, these are actual dilithium crystals um, used uh, on screen. And a lot of these small pieces here were used again in the original um, motion picture. Um, that, that came out um, many decades ago. So you have ago. Wrath of Khan here, you've got Star Trek the motion picture there. Yes. And some stuff wow, in you know between. Star Trek. I do know there a thing go. or two about a thing or two about Star Trek. These are the original cell phones, the very first cell phones that Gene and Major Roddenberry owned. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously appropriately, and yeah, these are old school, you know what I'm saying? For those people who remember these cell phones, they're heavy and um, you know, an early version of, of what we have today. But um, oftentimes people obviously look at cell phones and say, hey, you know, the flip phone really came from Star Trek. And so right next to their phones, we have our lovely communicator to remind ourselves of the tremendous influence that uh, Star Trek and Gene Roddenberry's vision had on a lot of different aspects of life, you know, whether it be social or technological, or um, you know, just having to do with looking forward towards something that people really didn't envision at the time. This is actually the original uniform that was worn by uh, William Shatner as Kirk in uh, The Wrath of Khan, which was the second movie, um, and it's called the Monster Maroon. And as you can see, like you know, it's obviously a little bit worn, but this is the original stuff that was utilized and and worn and on camera. So this was the original um, series shirt. Uh, worn um, by Captain Kirk and um, you know this wasn't the only one but this was definitely on screen and utilized by him and it's it's amazing how small William Shatner used to be I guess um, but uh, it's a really cool piece of, of Star Trek history once again um, and you can see the craftsmanship it's extremely interesting there's a, there's a design um, that there's a zipper right in here because you wonder oftentimes how they get into these things and you know they wanted to make them futuristic so they wouldn't utilize you know, at the time, how shirts worked, and so they would do things in different ways and use different materials, and uh, and you can really see, um, you know, the costume design of the time mm -hmm. and how they were looking at what what would be futuristic. This is not only um, uh, very personal to us, but it was actually um, personal to the Smithsonian for a while. Mm. This was um, Major Roddenberry's uh, as Nurse Chapel, um, the uh, uniform she wore in the original series, and again, um, this was in the Smithsonian for. I think over a decade. So here we have the captain's chair, Captain Kirk's chair, the centerpiece of Star Trek. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, this is probably one of my favorite items. Um, and actually, it came about uh, originally because we were giving one away. So we asked uh, the people who made the chair to, to make us one from the exact specs um, that the original chair was made. And, uh, and create one that we could, you know, kind of tour around for one year and give away, and that was a few years ago. And once we gave it away, we were really, really sad, and we needed another one. So, um, you know, we had uh, another one made uh, for us, and again, it's tremendously authentic, and uh, you actually can buy them. The new movie, Star Trek Into Darkness, did quite well. Um, yet there was a, a recent convention in Las Vegas and they voted on all the Star Trek movies and it came in dead last. Do you think it's a fair assessment that Star Trek Into Darkness was placed dead last for fans at this particular convention? I mean, I think, you know, and I think that's, those are the words you have to remember at this particular convention. I mean, you have to understand, and we go, we love the Star Trek convention in Las Vegas every year. We've been going for many, many years. It's a great convention. If you've never been, you should go, because it's really, 
uh, the largest Star Trek gathering of an entire, you know, annual basis. And, and, and it's, it's amazing. Everyone is there because they love this particular franchise. And what's great about Star Trek, and it's always been great about Star Trek, is people love different parts of the franchise. Some people like this series, some people like that series, some people like this captain, some people like that captain, so on and so forth. But there's something that everybody enjoys enough that they keep watching each one, of course. Um, when it comes to the new, the new movies, I think you have to remember, first off, that the people that were voting at that particular thing were of that old guard. So they were the pre-JJ lovers of Star Trek, and any time you introduce something new, it's provided with a certain amount of doubt, question, criticism, so on and so forth. And I think that that's one of the joys of Star Trek, is that it does have been different incarnations, and at the same time, there really oftentimes is, you know, one for everybody, if not more than one for everyone. Um, am I surprised that there's sort of backlash against the new movies in, in, from, that, from that group? Not really. I think that J.J. has very plainly said, you know, we aren't making that for them exactly. Um, at the same time, I think that, again, if you look at the films, I know, and I know the people who are writing the films and, 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 and working on them in some cases, you know, these people do care about Star Trek. You know, Star Trek has to grow and evolve, and I think that you have to remember that when you're watching it because it is a living, breathing entity in some ways. And so um, you have to let it grow and change. Yeoman Rand, cup of coffee, please.